I know what you're thinking. Well, I actually have no idea what you're thinking. I cannot read minds just yet. But you may be thinking, this is another damn video about Canon versus Sony, Sony versus Canon. I'm switching to Canon, I'm switching to Sony. So if you're a filmmaker or a YouTuber or both, I think this video is going to really help you out. Stay tuned until the end. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing on my channel. So here's the video. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Today I'm gonna help you decide if you should switch from Canon to Sony or from Sony to Canon. Watch this case study until the end and it'll help you decide which route to take based on your own needs. All of this and more in just a jiffy. Oh, what is going on? My name is Ben. Welcome to my channel. If you want to learn more about filmmaking, photography, acting, and audio, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. Most important question. Now, the main question you should and must ask yourself is this one. What do you mostly use your camera for? That's it. I bet you use your camera for many purposes, but what do you mainly use your camera for? Let me go over my personal case study so you can understand my decision and hopefully it'll help you make a decision about switching cameras or just staying with what you have. Introduction, case study. I've been shooting with a Canon C200D for the last two years thanks to Ravidia and Boo from the Crimson Engine YouTube channel. The C200V is a cheaper version of the C200, but without the screen, the top handle, the viewfinder, and without the camera grip. He introduced me to this camera when I found his video about the quality differences between shooting an 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit RAW. I soon fell in love with the C200V with the image quality you can get out of this camera with its price, so I immediately got one to make my YouTube videos. I've always been a Canon shooter. I have several Canon lenses in my arsenal already and I was already shooting with the Canon EOS R, so it made sense for me to upgrade to a C200B and I loved it. I used the camera for almost two years but the camera has only one key flaw feature that made me consider other cameras. So what I'm going to do is a breakdown of the features that made me lean towards my decision of switching. Yes, I have switched from Canon to Sony. This video is not about revealing at the end if I switched or not, but this video is about the why I have switched to hopefully help you decide what to do if you are in a similar situation. Let me go over that list of camera features and at the end I am going to reveal that main key feature that was the non-negotiable point that made me switch. So here we go. Features list, main purpose. Well, in my case, I have two main purposes for my cameras, making YouTube videos and making movies. However, I make a movie once every three to four years, but I make YouTube videos once every couple of weeks. So my main purpose is making YouTube videos and therefore there are some features I need and other features I do not need. At least not as often because again, I make a movie once every couple of years. C4K, DCI stands for Digital Cinema Initiatives. Well, the Sony FX3 does not shoot in Cinema 4K, aka DCI 4K, which has a resolution of 4096 by 2160, while UHD is 3840 by 2160. But again, I mainly shoot YouTube videos, so the lack of DCI 4K is not a deal breaker for me. If need be, I can always rent a DCI 4K camera in the future or just use my trusty Panasonic GH5S. So this point goes to Sony. Internal ND filters. Internal ND filters are a very nice toy. The C200 has internal ND filters, so does the Sony FX6. However, most of my shooting is indoors with the studio lights, so I virtually have no use for internal ND filters, and therefore, point for the FX3. Lens library. Canon has a bigger library of lenses than Sony. 
Not only that, but there are more Canon EF mount lenses made by third party manufacturers than for Sony E mount. And I currently own seven Canon EF mount lenses five made by Canon, one made by Sigma, and one made by Venus Optics Lawa, compared to the only two Sony E mount lenses I currently have. Even though I can adapt my EF mount lenses to E mount through a Sigma or a Metabones adapter, adapted lenses never work as well as native lenses. So I gotta give this one to Canon. IVIS. Cinema cameras typically do not have image stabilization built in because usually image stabilization is not needed when shooting a narrative movie. Sure, action sequences require them, and movie productions have all kinds of expensive steadicam like systems. But in my case, IVIS is an advantage if I want to go, let's say, handheld and shoot some slow motion B roll for my YouTube videos. So, in my case scenario, this point goes to Sony. Portability, gimbal flexibility. Well, small size matters when it comes to portability and gimbal options. Just look at the size of this power brick for the C200. It's almost as big as the FX3. The batteries are bigger, the camera body is bigger. Even though this is a no brainer for me, point for Sony, I imagine you may be thinking, hey, it's not fair to compare a cinema camera with a compact mirrorless camera. And technically speaking, you are right. There are two very different kinds of cameras, but in this video, I am just explaining you why I have switched from Canon to Sony, again, hoping it'll help you as well if you're in a similar situation. Color science. Yes, the legendary Canon color science, how they render their skin tones. Big selling point for me. I love how Canon render the reds, very natural, warm, and pleasing to look at. I shot all of my portraits for the last 15 years with Canon cameras and lenses, but Sony has come to improve their color science quite a lot, and they produce a very pleasing image. S Cinetone is gorgeous out of the box and gets even better with a little color correction and a little bit of gray. I use the Liming LUT Pro and the Phantom Film Look LUTs, and I absolutely love the look I get on my images, so this one is a tie for me. Workflow. The C200B produces an amazing image when you shoot in Canon raw light format at 12-bit. But those files are huge, so I started to use a workaround also taught by Rabidium where you shoot at 12-bit raw and then convert and save those files to 10-bit files on my computer. The 12-bit raw files never leave the CFAS card and that worked, but after two years that workaround got a little old. Not to mention, the 128GB card I have only gives me 16 minutes of raw recording. So the workflow point goes to the FX3 as well. 10-bit internal recording. And the main key feature that was the non-negotiable point that made me switch to Sony is the lack of internal 10-bit recording. Sure, you can record 10-bit externally with the C200, but so you can externally record 16-bit RAW with the FX3. But for practicality and convenience, recording 10-bit internally straight to a memory card beats the C200 workflow any day. I know I can buy a C70 that records 10-bit internally, but the C70 is priced at $5,499, and that is out of my budget. For a sub $4,000 price range, the FX3 is definitely the best camera you can buy today if you want a full-frame camera capable of recording 10-bit internally, and your main purpose is to make high-quality 4K YouTube videos. The FX3 also allows you to plug full-size XLR microphones through its detachable adapter handle, so you can plug much better microphones and record amazing sound directly into your video files. And therefore, check for Sony. Yeah. Conclusion. What is the key takeaway from this video? The main key takeaways from this video are two. Number one is of course that choosing Canon or Sony depends on your own personal needs. And number two is that if your main purpose is to shoot YouTube videos, I believe the Sony FX3 or the Sony A7S3, which is basically the same camera, is a much better option compared to the Canon C200, the C70, or the R5, because mainly of the workflow involved the better autofocus system, and the new Sony color science that is on par with Canon's legendary skin tones.
So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments section below what camera are you using to shoot your YouTube videos. And if you have any questions I can help you with, like, subscribe, and I hope to see you on my next video. See ya. Please click the like button. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you.